In InDesign CS5, we've done a ton of work on just making everyday tasks easier and quicker, specifically without making you have to switch from tool to tool as much or at all. So for instance, I have a group of four images here on the page, and each of these images are actually much larger than the frame that they're sitting in. And in previous versions, if you wanted to reposition the content within that frame, you would have to either triple click with the selection tool or switch to the direct selection tool to select that content first and act on it independently of the frame itself. With InDesign CS5, we've added something called the content indicator, and that's this transparent circle that you see in the middle of every image as I mouse over each of these frames. If you put your mouse in the actual center of that circle, you'll see that your cursor changes to a hand. What this lets you do is quickly reposition the content just by clicking and dragging within the frame. And when you let go, you'll see that there's nothing actually selected. So you didn't have to switch to a tool, you didn't have to triple click, you just pass over and drag to quickly reposition all the content within those frames. So I can do that for all these frames here. And you'll see that the minute you click on a image, you instantly see the part of the image that's been cropped by that frame. So that's the new content indicator. You can also use the content indicator to actually select the content within the frame. You'll notice that if I click on that circle, the content, that image, is now selected as opposed to the frame being selected. So if I wanted to scale the image or rotate it within the frame, this is a quick way to actually just get to that content. Again, notice though that I haven't actually had to switch to a different tool. If I hit the escape key, that will take me back up to the frame. Another subtle but nice change is if you move outside the frame slightly, your cursor will change to a rotate icon, which means you can rotate the frame on the page, again, without having to switch to a separate rotate tool or a free transform tool. We'll just quickly undo that. Also new is you can now select multiple items and transform them together. I've got these four images selected here, and there's now a bounding box around those selected items. If I go ahead and click on the corner handle, I can actually act on all those images at the same time. I'm holding down the Command key or the Control key in Windows to scale all four of these at the same time. In previous versions, you would have had to have grouped those images first or used the Control panel before you could do that type of transformation. If I were to grab this particular image here, select it, and move its corner handle, you'll see that I'm not actually scaling the image. I'm just changing the size of the frame, so I'm making a different crop. I'm going to undo that. There's a new feature here called Auto Fit. And if I turn the auto fit checkbox on in the control panel and then do that same gesture of just grabbing the corner handle, you'll see what happens is that InDesign will resize that content at the same time as it's resizing the frame. So it's actually repositioning and maintaining that aspect ratio as you scale that content. So auto fit's a great new feature. It's especially neat when you combine it with another new tool called the gap tool. Now the gap tool, if you see the cursor here, when it's over an actual object on the page, it actually gives you a not valid symbol. The gap tool doesn't actually work on objects on the page at all. It works on the spaces in between them. So if I wanted to quickly change and iterate this layout and change the size of one frame, in older versions or previous versions of InDesign, if I change the size of this flower image, the berry image is not going to move with me as I do that change. With the gap tool, I can put the mouse between objects here. And if I start dragging to the left, you'll see that the images on the right are getting smaller while the images on the right are getting wider. So this quickly changes all the images uniformly and maintains the space between them. Because we have the auto fit feature turned on, all those images are automatically scaling to fit that new frame size as well. I can do the same thing on the horizontal gap as well. You'll see those images automatically adjusting. By default, it affects all the images and all the frames on the shared uh, gap boundary. If you hold down some modifiers though, you can actually quickly just change one. So if I hold down the shift key, I can actually quickly iterate that layout very intuitively and fluidly. Last lo long time uh, feature request is the ability to adjust the corner effects of an object. If I switch back to my selection tool and click on any rectangular shaped frame, you'll see there's this new little yellow square. And if you hover over it, it tells you you can click on that to edit the corners. That puts four little yellow diamonds on each corner. If I click on one of those yellow diamonds, I can actually drag to adjust the corner radius of every uh, corner uniformly. If I just want to change one corner, I can hold down the shift key and then just drag that one back to being straight. So I can do that real quickly here again. On any rectangular shape, click the yellow square, and then we can make this one corner 
just round. So you have a lot of flexibility and that's just a quick sample of some of the many things that we've done to make everyday layout, design, and production tasks much easier and quicker.